Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi. This is Junis. Plan with me. I make pop-up bullet journal every month, and today it's time to work on September spreads. I know some of you may expect a cozy autumn theme with falling leaves and warm orange tone, but it's still summer in California right now, so please be patient, and maybe you can look forward to it next month. As you can already tell, this month theme is tea party. As a big tea lover, I've had this idea for a while, and I think it's perfect time to share with you today. And before we start, I want to give a special thank you to today's sponsor, Notebook Therapy. And I'd like to introduce these beautiful products included in this tea party collection with you before we start today's Bujo journey. This tea collection was launched to celebrate their two-year anniversary for Tsuki product line, and let's start with these three new design notebooks. It's hard to pick a favorite, but as a big pink and strawberry lover, this boba tea cover is literally melting my heart. Plus, I'm also a huge boba tea lover. This one is made of vegan leather, and the edge also comes with this shiny gold foil, cute doodle design. The other two's cover are made of linear fabric, one's in matcha green, one in dark sky blue. A special design I want to mention is that the Cup of Galaxy edition is using holographic foil on the logo and edge, which gives you this colorful, shiny effect under any light. I mean, just look at it. It's so gorgeous. I think it looks even better in real life. There's always a small bookmark gift, and each of them is matching the book binding perfectly. All journals have three sizes, and here what I have are in A5. There's also original and B5 for you to choose from. I made a detailed review video, and I'll leave the link in the right up corner if you're interested. And I also want to quickly show you the box comes with it. They are recyclable paper box. Great for storage, and each of them are slightly different depending on which edition you get because the color matches it. So it could be holographic, silver, or gold. Personally, I really love this sweet touch. The next is the washi tape set. Notebook Therapy started their own products line since this April, and I've been loving every box they released. As always, it comes with two mini stickers and eight washi tapes, including one 30 millimeter white tape, one stamp set. One with circle stickers, three in 50 millimeter, one thin tape, and a function tape with five different patterns. The Bobo and Matcha edition has gold foil, and the Galaxy edition has holographic foil matching the notebooks. Within this collection, there are also two canvas tote bags, 40 centimeter by 30 centimeter, perfect size for carrying stationery, notebooks, or even laptop. There's also a hidden inner pocket with zip in it, which is great for a wallet. And the Mocha Green Tea Edition also comes with this cute little pouch. I actually took this strawberry milk tea one to my local craft fair and really enjoy using it. This collection was so popular and sold out pretty quickly after releasing earlier this month. But now all the products are restocked, so if you missed the first run sale, don't miss it this time. I'll leave the links in the description box down below, and you can also use my coupon code Junison10 while purchasing. I'll receive a small amount of commission fee while you get 10% off on your entire order, and I really appreciate. And now let's start today's Bujo journey. This October is actually a one-year anniversary for me making Papa Bully journal. A year ago, I did this three-layer rotating moon and bunny setup, and I have to say it's still one of my favorites. And today, I'm going to show you another simple way to make rotating effect. But first of all, let me introduce stickers I just released on my online shop to match the tea theme for this month. Honestly, instead of tea theme, it's more like kettle and cup theme. But anyway, I'm really happy with these designs I made. And if you're interested, check out at junisunstudio.com, and there's also a digital download option with mini calendars. Okay, without further ado, grab some paper, a ruler, and a scissor. Let's work on the pop-up pieces. Here, I made a simplified version to explain the mechanic first. The dimension I used on the top one is based on the extra size I'm going to make for the vase later, so you can change it to match whatever design you want to make. Basically, it's a rectangle divided into two parts, and on the folding line, find a random spot in the middle area, draw out a 90 degree triangle. Dotted line means folding, and solid line means cutting. The gray area are for gluing later. Same size for the gluing section on the second piece. 
The arm size I'm using 4cm but it can be changed depends on the third piece later. So before moving on, let me show you how this rotation works. Fold the first piece following the guideline and for the middle triangle, you want to fold it back to the opposite direction. Then glue the arm on the gray area. The third piece will be placed on the end of the arm, but for now we can already see the 90 degree rotating while opening and folding as I'm showing here. Using the same dimension, now I draw in some detail to make this one on the bottom look like a vest. My setup is on a 5 notebook, so you can either follow the size I'm using or change it based on your card size. As always, I prepared a template for you if you'd like to have this tea rose pot theme. And it's available in my online shop as digital download. The pot I did it in watercolor and the size is roughly 7 by 11 cm. Now with all the pieces ready, let's start the assembling. Like I said earlier, the vase is the same size as the demo version, but I did cut away the right up corner. It won't affect how it works as long as you keep the rectangle V shape and the connection below it. As for the glue, I'm using Aline's tacky glue, dotted tape glue, and regular glue stick. Depending on how strong you want the connection to be, you can choose among them. And I'll leave the links in the description down below along with all other supplies I use in this video. So the first step is same as earlier. Fold the vis, glue the arm triangle to the main body, and check it if it can fold with no problem. When you place it on the notebook, try placing other elements on to help you find the perfect location. Here I have some roses on the top and the teacup on the right down corner, so I decide to place the vest in the middle area of the spread. The next is to glue on the flowers. One thing you want to pay attention is that to make sure the flowers won't pass the left glue folding line. Otherwise, it could be folded while closing the notebook. With that in mind, now you can glue the roses wherever you want. In my template, I offer 7 pieces, 8 roses, and you may not need all of them. Feel free to have your own combination, or maybe you want to change it to other flowers you like. Now the vase is done, to glue it on, you need to find the spot on the left page first. Since the right section of the vase piece I used 2cm, I'm going to also find 2cm on the left from the middle binding line. Glue the left edge of the vase on and then put glue on the right edge, then close the notebook to make sure it can fold flat. The next is to glue the teapot on. For this step, you may need to test a few times to get the best angle and also may need to trim the arm to fit it better. Here I use a tip glue because it allows me to take it off easily and replace if needed. Make sure the glue is on the edge so it won't affect the base after folding. The final step is to place the teacup. I choose to glue it right under the teapot's mouth so it looks like the tea perfectly coming down to the cup if that makes sense to you. So yeah, that's all for this rotating pop-up. I hope I explained it clear enough. And if you're interested in recreating and posting it on Instagram, don't forget to tag me at Juni Sun Xiaomei, both in the description and on the post, so I won't miss it. I'm really looking forward to your beautiful work. And now let's move on to the rest cover page setup. There are some big changes happening in my life, so I didn't have too much time to make the rest spread super complicated and arty, so I'll use some of my stickers I made in the past as well. It's interesting to see how all my past themes kind of merging into one. They're from my coffee, rose, cozy home, picnic, cherry blossom, butterfly theme, and the one on top is from my Easter sticker set. I'm super into vintage style these days, so again, I'm using some old book page and then decorate the rest with stickers and washi tapes. Actually, when I first started planning this month's theme, I had many ideas about tea in different cultures. As a Chinese, I've been surrounded by all kinds of Chinese tea as I grow up. In my house, in my grandparents' house, and instead of serving water, tea is always the first option for guests too. And by the way, tea bag is definitely not acceptable for us. We have very long history for the tea making and tea culture, however, I'm not an expert at all, and even though I still have the habit of drinking tea, I'm actually using the one my parents picked and gave to me. So instead of introducing Chinese traditional tea, I decide just to focus on different style of teapot this time. 
and the rose flower teapot on the cover page is actually inspired by a set my grandma owns. As you can see, I also apply some Japanese sakura dessert sticker on the left side, and there will also be some European snacks showing up in the later pages. So yeah, I decided now to draw a clear line between different countries, just embrace different cultures of tea. For the title October, I stab it on a craft paper and glue it on the left empty space, then add a small calendar under it. I'm also drawing some stars with Uniball gel pen as well as highlighting the pleats edges. And the last step is to add more craft paper to balance the overall look. Now my cover page is done, what about yours? I believe this pop-up mechanic is not hard for you at all, and I'll be happy to see you giving it a try. Feel free to leave comments down below if you have any questions. Moving on to the monthly view page, I'll start with Tumble Do Brush Pen 772 to lay out the calendar. Oh, by the way, today I'm not going to use watercolor for this setup at all, so you'll see me struggling with more brush pen very soon. I know it's really easy to use it for highlighting, but I'm still a newbie to use it for coloring, so please just bear with me. The Notebook Therapy Dot Washi Tape has 18 different designs, and I picked some pink ones for writing Monday to Sunday. Then again, stamped October title on the empty space. I made quite a lot of mistakes in this setup, including forgetting to glue the craft paper on first, but it's easy to fix. The corner is not perfect, but it's okay to be not perfect sometimes. On the right down corner, I'm drawing a teacup. Well, it's not really in the corner because I want to make a dash door behind it. And on the next page, there will be a teapot. So yeah, this is where I challenged myself with tumble brush pen pretty much for the first time. I picked out all the pink, purple, and greenish pen I have, but still not feeling very comfortable. Because with watercolor, I have the full control of what color and shades I want to make. Not sure if you know what I'm saying, but here I can only work with limited options. It just feels pretty weird, but I'm not complaining about the pen. Just want to say you guys are amazing to who can color it so well with limited color options. Next, put aside all the brush pens and keep decorating the rest with my stickers. Kick from Sakula set. It's not cherry blossom season right now, but pink is still my favorite, so I think it works. And then two strawberries from my picnic set. Now I think about it, I actually made a lot of food stickers. Drawing some shadow with light gray, and it's time to cut the Dutch door. On the back of it, I'm going to use it as gratitude. Since we're on the stamping step, let me just finish making titles for the rest, which is Go and To Do List. And they will be signed to the red edge, perfectly shown with the previous calendar page. In September setup, I only left a small portion for gratitude, and now it's exploding. So many things happened in my life recently, and I have so many things to appreciate. This time, I'm trying 31 lines, and hopefully it's enough. On the right down corner, that's where I designed to draw a teapot, so it can match the cup in the front. The final result may look decent, that's because I adjust the footage's lightness and color tone a little bit, so it's actually not as good as how it looks like. But anyway, it was an interesting experience, Although I'm not sure if I'll do it again with Tumble Do Brush Pen to color in the future. After adding in gold edge and shadows, it's time to place some book texture paper and washi tape again. And now the calendar plus gratitude plus go plus to do spreads are done. Moving on to the next page is my mood tracker. In the center, I want to draw in an European style teapot, and I also actually made one in my sticker set. Since the one I'm placing on this page is pretty big, I decided to use Furinasoko brush pen to have a thick outline. Then going with Tumble Do brush pen again, pretty much use all the pink brushes I have. They are 723, 772, 761, and 800. And the girl I use for leave is 098. I try to give it a subtle transition, but it turns out still pretty weird. Later, my friend Anna from Journal Away told me that I should use Blender brush pen. Then I realized that I do have one, but I probably only used it once last year. Anyway, if you guys have any good suggestions or experience using Tumble brush pen, let me know in the comments. So for the mood tracker, I had a few ideas. First of all, tea bag. 
But like I said earlier, it's really not my thing, so I give it up. And I also thought about drawing 31 cups, but I'm a simple and stubborn person, so I can pretty much count the cups I used in the past 10 years with one hand. 31 cups is really not my style. And then I remember that I used to love the cookie and cracker box when I was little. Still remember it wasn't cheap for me back then, so I could only get it for some holidays. But now I can eat as many as I want. Here I also added more other cookies I love, like macaron and egg rolls. Basically, this page review my ideal afternoon tea time. As for the legend, I wasn't sure what color to use when I filmed, so I left it empty. But I'm thinking maybe just different shades of beige or yellow could be good. On the right side, I'm going to use it as daily log. And another almost spelling mistake. Yes, I still make those stupid mistakes, and it's so funny that they can always be picked up by some of you. I read every single comment, so I see some people seriously trying to fix my wrong spelling. Well, good catch. So for the daily log, I usually use it to track my work hour, eating hour, workout, and reading time. But as you may notice, I start to reduce the amount of work and only release one or two videos per month. Because recently, I want to pay more attention to work-life balance and also slowly changing my life focus for some personal reasons. Not sure exactly how I'm going to use this log, but it still be for tracking important things in my daily life. You can also apply it to sleep hours or productivity tracker. And finally, we're on the weekly spread. But first of all, I'm going to make a habit tracker on the left edge. I've been wanting to try out this design and actually did a horizontal one this July in my ocean theme. So basically, the habit tracker will be combined with the rest Dutch door weekly pages, which I'll show you in a second. This design will make it easier to use the tracker as a reminder because I can easily see it no matter which week I'm in. Since the first week starts on Friday, I also have some extra space here, so I decided to use it as brain dump. Now back to the habit tracker. This month, I also reduced to only tracking four habits. It helps me to focus better and have a better result on completing rate. Then for the weekly dash doors, I cut away the mini calendar size of paper on the edge for five weeks, and on each page, I also leave a text space from top to the bottom in order. Here, I save one by eight dot space for each tag. You can customize it based on your journal if you're not using a five size notebook. It looks like a waste for the cutaway paper, but I usually use them to make a test version of my pop-up designs, so I'll say they're well recycled. If you want, you can also make them into notepad for later use. Or you can make those spreads into rolling week. Fold each page into half so you can still see the habit tracker on the left side. It's a little bit hard to explain with words. I usually don't use that layout because my journal is already getting bulky with pop-ups. But if there's a chance in the future Bujo setup, I'll show you guys how it works. The first week had three days, perfect for the right page, and then I can decorate the rest with stickers. For each day, I set nine dots height, and the last spot you can use it for weekly to do or note. Since I'm going to place my note section on the right side on the last page, here I decide to just decorate with different teapot set. If you pay attention, you may already notice that the teapot and cups from my stickers are actually matching. In order to make the size working, I had to set the cup stickers pretty small, which turned out really cute. So yeah, same layout but with different tea set. I apply this design to the rest of weeklies, and also adding some plants or flowers besides the pot and cups. This year, I've been making my weekly spreads pretty simple, always using the same layout over one month. One reason is because I realized that I don't have time and energy to set up every single page differently. And with the same layout, I can also focus better on finishing the tasks instead of getting used to the new design every seven days. This is just my personal experience and how my style changed over the years. If you like exploring different design or layout on every page, that's great. Finding the best setup for yourself is the most important. The next is to color the text. Remember to place a piece of paper under it while coloring, so it won't mess up the pages on the back. Here, I want to color the tag to match the teapot set I place on each week, but there's always an accident, actually two. I'm not happy with the yellow one either because it looks so pop-up, so I make another patch to change it to a beige color. 
I think I'm a perfect nasum sometimes, but I also want to share the mystic moments with you because Bully Journal is a place you can do whatever you want and no need to worry about being perfect. After running the corners, I'm going to work on the last page, which is note on the site, and like always, I'll have a monthly summary and next month's plan section. As I'm working on that, I want to take a little bit of time to give a special thank you to my new Patreon members. Melanie, Meg, Lenny, Nadine, and Saskia. Thank you so much for your support and love. It means so much to me and this channel. Also, same thank you to all the lovelies who visited and supported my small sticker business. And of course, watching my YouTube videos here and staying with me until the end of this video, I also really appreciate. And now it's time for the final flip through. Even though it's not autumn yet in California, maybe it's already pretty cold where you are. So I hope this tea theme bullet journal setup can bring some warm vibe to you and maybe some inspiration too. And that's all I want to share with you today. Thank you for watching and if you like this video, please click the thumb up button that will help it to reach more people and help this channel to grow. If you want to see more content from me, remember to subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any new updates. I hope you have an amazing October and I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye!